Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel, and today we're going to be talking about things that can ruin your preps, more specifically your food preps. But there's a lot of these that can ruin other kinds of preps as well, things like clothing and gear. But the first thing we're going to talk about are pests, and these are things like insects and rodents. As far as insects are concerned, these could be moths, beetles, weevils, ants, roaches, many others, but what's disgusting about insects in particular is certain ones like weevils, they can lay eggs in something like wheat, and then later on after it's been milled, been turned into flour, those eggs can hatch. So you have a little infestation in your flour, and there are insects out there that can chew through pretty much any of the food packaging materials that we would use, things like cardboard, foil, cellophane so they can get right into say a box of cereal right into a bag of flour and then as far as rodents are concerned mice and rats are probably the biggest concern and they can spread disease many different ways if they bite you they can spread disease they can also spread disease through their feces their urine their saliva and that stuff also gets on their fur and their feet as well so that gives them a lot of different ways that they can make you sick and contaminate your food storage. And the bad thing about rats is they can chew through way more than insects can. In addition to being able to chew through things like cardboard and cellophane, they can also chew through mylar. They can chew through plastic buckets, and they can even chew through some metal trash cans. They have a harder time with steel trash cans, but if you have just something like a thin aluminum one, they might be able to go right through that. So when talking about different kinds of pests, insects and rodents, you want to do everything that you can to prevent infestations in the first place. Of course, you have things like pesticides and you want to use your best judgment when using those things, like you probably don't want them right next to your food. Good way to use them is to prevent them from getting into your house in the first place along baseboards, things like that, so they can never actually make it to your food. Then also traps are good, especially for uh, things like rodents. You can trap them and then kill them, do whatever you need to. But you want to make sure that you take care of problems early. The second that you see some ants or another group of insects, or the second you see mouse or rat droppings, you want to go on a search and destroy mission and take care of those little suckers as soon as possible. The next thing that can ruin your preps, and this one is more food specific, is air. And that happens through the process of oxidation. It can change the color, the flavor, and the nutrient content of your food. And it can also cause the oils in certain foods, things like brown rice, to go rancid. That's why we use airtight containers for food. We also use oxygen absorbers. And another thing oxygen can do is that it allows certain kinds of mold and bacteria to grow or grow a little bit better than they would otherwise. Although there are some kinds of bacteria that can grow in low oxygen environments, which we'll talk about in a second. But another thing air allows to happen is uh, those insect eggs that we talked about a second ago, is if there is air, then those eggs can hatch, then you have an infestation. That's another reason why you want to use oxygen absorbers in like your long-term food storage because if there's no air, then those eggs can't hatch. The next thing that can ruin your preps is moisture. It can allow things like mold and bacteria to grow in your food storage. So that's the reason why you only want to store dry goods in something like Mylar. Things that have a moisture content of less than 10%. So that's going to be things like dried beans, dried rice, flour, although it won't store as long. But you want to avoid putting things like raisins in Mylar because even though, you know, they're kind of dried out a little bit, they still do have quite a bit of moisture in them. Now, of course, canned goods, you know, things like soup or stuff that you can at home, they do have a lot of moisture. I mean, duh, they have water, they have juices and things like that, but the way that those are packaged, they can still be stored for a long time. But one thing to look out for, whether you're storing canned goods, mylar, stuff you can yourself at home, is botulism, because it can affect any type of food storage that has moisture but a low oxygen content, you want to look for packages that are leaking, bulging, swollen, 
And then also, if you open up a container and, you know, stuff squirts out or it's like all foamy and mess or just smells bad, looks bad or looks moldy, then go ahead and get rid of it. Just assume something is wrong with it. The good rule to follow is when in doubt, just throw it out. And it's important to remember that moisture can cause rust on things like knives and tools as well. The next thing that can ruin your preps is light. And that happens through a process called photodegradation. And photodegradation can cause flavor and nutrient content to decrease. Things like vitamins, amino acids, and fats, they are all light sensitive. So that's why we store foods in things like mylar, metal cans, which are impervious to light so that that type of process will not happen to our foods. And another thing that can ruin your preps is temperature. High temperatures can cause changes to appearance, flavor, and result in nutrient loss as well. And also, higher temperatures can allow bacteria to grow. If we're talking about fresh food, which I know that's not really, you know, long-term food storage, but if we're talking about something like meat, any temperature between 40 and 140 degrees, that is the danger zone. We want to stay out of that. But when it comes to long-term food storage, things like canned goods, anything that we have in Mylar bags, we want to keep it around 75 degrees or below and keep that temperature as consistent as possible. So one way that you can do that, of course, don't put stuff in the attic, don't put it in the garage, because most of the time those are not climate controlled. Maybe you have one that is, a lot of us don't though. But one thing a lot of folks don't think about is exterior walls. Like my pantry, it is on an exterior wall, doesn't have an air vent in it. So that means that that pantry is more susceptible to temperature changes. So I don't put my long-term food storage in that pantry. It's mostly stuff that we're going to use fairly quick. And it's also a good idea to keep a thermometer near your food storage so that you can adjust the temperature and make sure that everything's safe. And then finally, improper organization can ruin your preps as well. So when it comes to foods, you want to rotate them as much as possible, and that includes things like canned goods. Not necessarily because you're worried about them flat out spoiling, but you want to have the highest quality food possible. So having something like a first in, first out can rotator is a good way to make sure that you use up anything before it has a chance to degrade. Now, if you have something like a big walk-in pantry, of course, you can build one of those big, huge can rotators that's vertical, but for the rest of us that have a smaller pantry, you can purchase can rotators online. Um, but, I mean, if you have a ton of food storage, something like a small can rotator, it might not do the job. So try to come up with a system that will allow you to rotate through those foods as much as possible. And improper organization, it can affect other areas of preparedness as well. I mean, you cannot use your gear if you don't know where it's at. So try to have like a dedicated spot in your closet or maybe a spare room where you can keep your preps, have everything organized by type, like have all of your off-grid cooking stuff in one area. Be careful how you store fuel, of course then have cold weather preps, warm weather preps, um, have your bug out bag packed up, have it somewhere where it's easily accessible, you won't have to search for it, things like that. And y'all, if y'all wanna see the kinds of foods that you should be stockpiling, y'all click here. Y'all have a good one, thanks again.